we're going to get started here and look at, at what creates opportunities. And of course, we've realized over the last few years that uh, markets have been pretty volatile. And of course, volatility equals risk. And increased volatility equals increased risk. And risk and profit are directly related. So when you have increased volatility, which equals increased risk, then you're going to have increased uh, opportunities for profit. But of course, comes with that is the, is, is the increased risk. Of course, a lot of, of perception about something being an opportunity or a risk is your attitude toward that. Uh, you know, it's kind of like Ron said, is the, is the glass half full or is it half empty? And I'm kind of a, a half full kind of guy. I'm, I, I look for the opportunities and always always have. And, and, and to give you a, a, a hint up front here that I'm very bullish uh, on production agriculture uh, going forward. There's just, there, there's lots of opportunities. But in the, in the near term, that's what we want to want to focus on uh, this this morning and see if we can find maybe some opportunities in this uh, record cattle market to try to uh, get us get us a, a perception as to where we are based on uh, our history. If we look last year at in February of 2013, not very long ago actually, just one year ago. Uh, what was the price of a 500 pound steer? You know, a dollar and 77 cents a pound. Today, a little more than that, two dollars and 15 cents a pound. That's a hundred and ninety dollars a head difference. Uh, so does that create a, an opportunity or does that, is that a risk? <laughs> uh, you, you know, price of corn, you know, we've, we've been through uh, a, a lot, you know, some very high feed prices. So what was March 14 futures trading at a year ago? 564 a bushel. Today, over a dollar a bushel less. You know, so that's good news. You know, feed is a big cost of production for us in the cattle business. So we've got $190 higher 550 pound feeder cattle prices than we had last year. We've got over a dollar a bushel lower corn. So what's the problem? <laughs> you know, uh, we got higher prices and, and lower feed costs, so there should should be lots of profit potential, right? Well, there's still a lot of a lot of risk as we as we've mentioned. So what does the record cattle market look like? It looks kind of like that. If you look down here, uh, this is 1973. And in 1973 is the year I graduated from, from college. Of course, uh, I, I don't know how many of you have ever received a personal letter from the President of the United States, but I did. And uh, actually, it was the fall of 1972. Do you remember who was President during that era? had a middle initial M, Richard M. Nixon <laughs> was the president in 1973. And if you remember, uh, he, he froze the price of beef. It was very high in 1973. If you come back, it was, it was going up. And so he, he froze it until September the 1st of 1973, and he took it off. And of course, all of us thought, well, boy, when the, when, the, when the price freeze goes off, prices are just going to shoot up. But that didn't happen, did it? They went down. And of course, they went down to, to 1975. Here they bought them. And then we started up into the late 70s. You know, it's been volatile. And then here recently, we've been in a very strong bull market. And I think therein was why the question was posed, well, is there, is there 
any opportunities left uh, in this very bull market. Where from here? Is it going to go further up? Are we just uh, positioned for a down market? But we've had a, had a very strong uh, movement in our cattle market. From the low, we're just a little over $20 a hundredweight. Uh, in 1975 was the low. Here, uh, you, you know, over $2.20 a pound. And these is for four to five weight steers, weekly prices for this 40 years. So that's a thousand percent increase uh, since uh, 1973. In 40 years, we've had a thousand percent increase in the price of cattle uh, of four to four to five weights. Because if we look at seven to eight weight cattle, uh, again in '75 uh, it was a little over uh, twenty dollars a hundred weight there, uh, not quite up into the two dollar range, but over uh, over 150, 160 now. And so that's about a 700% increase over these last 40 years. This is a an in, very interesting chart. Uh, the blue line is weekly data. The red line is annual data. But it's a cattle inventory. This is 1975. Here's the low. And 1975 was the year that, that cattle numbers peaked in the United States. And it's been declining ever since. Look at the price formation here. As we're going down, cattle prices going up, went up a little, they went down, up, down. So supply does impact price, doesn't it? And so we're in a, we're in a, a very uh, low number cow herd right now, under 90 million head of all cattle and calves in the United States. And as you know, that it takes us a lot longer to turn the ship around uh, than it does for, for the poultry and pork industry. Uh, they can ramp up a lot quicker than we can. So, so uh, the, the stage is set. And of course, we're still struggling with Mother Nature. As Ron pointed out earlier, as the drought monitor continues to show increased concerns about uh, dry conditions in the state. Uh, but here, uh, I think, indicates that we're staged some, for some uh, uh, continued strong cattle prices into, into the future. As we look at these markets, are there any opportunities for marketing? If you look at the last three years of four to five weight weekly prices, this is a three-year average. So if you, if you looked at, say, the first week of January, which there's not many sales at that time, so you get to get to the second week, the first week of, the, of 2000. In 11, 12, and 13, the average price for a four to five weight calf was a little over $1.70. And so it went up. If you were going to buy or sell a four to five hundred weight calf during the, during the year, what time of year would you want to do that? You'd want to buy during this time, wouldn't you? During the August time period, that's an opportunity to buy at the lowest time of the year. But if you were going to sell, then I think those are the times that you'd be looking at to sell. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to produce a calf in, in uh, February weighing four to 500 pounds. That's the reason the price is strong. But here, you know, when do we typically wean and a lot of people sell? Uh, you know, it, it's late, late fall. But if you hang on a little bit longer, and that's the reason that, that a lot of times these, these preconditioned programs are very profitable. In fact, research has indicated that about seven out of ten years, it's profitable to retain ownership. And there's, you know, you can see now there's, there's really two reasons for that. One is, is uh, you know, you kind of turn your calf crop from calves into yearlings. Uh, you gain some weight during that time period. And assuming value of gain is, is higher than cost of gain, uh, you're going to make money on that. But you also are getting this, this seasonal movement uh, in cattle prices from, uh, you know, in the last three years, uh, a little over $1.60 to a little over $1.90. So that's a, you know, that's averaged over $30 a hundredweight move, just moving their sale time from August or not quite as much in October to December. So there's some opportunities there, wouldn't you agree? Uh, just by looking at the seasonality of the cattle market, and saying, well, when, when is the best time to, to sell?
if you look at seven to eight weight cattle, uh, again, here's the seasonality of it. This would be the best time to sell during the year, late in, late in the year, October, November, December. Uh, so every, every class has a little bit different seasonality price pattern. Uh, so as we study these, these are ways that we can, we can take advantage of some opportunities in the seasonality of different classes of, of cattle. When we look at the futures market, uh, here's August 14 feeder cattle. What's happened there? Uh, about a year ago, it was trading here at about you know, 158. It's moved up almost $20 a hundredweight. And so again, that presents some opportunities for pricing. S some of us may not feel very comfortable or don't want anything to do with the, with the futures market in Chicago. Uh, but that's, that's really the only uh, place that we can guarantee a price for the future. Uh, because today, you know, we're sitting here at uh, February of, of, four, of 14, and we could look out to August and say that uh, we can price our cattle for a dollar and but it's, it's up in the mid-70s mid there. You know, is, is that price good enough for you to take? Is that an acceptable price? You know, you have to look at your uh, uh, cost of gain and, and break even and to determine what $1.74 actually offers you. Is that a profit or is it uh, a break even? And so it takes knowing your individual cost of production break even to know what that opportunity is. Value of gain is, is a, it's a pretty simple concept, but it's a very powerful concept when you look trying to find opportunities in the market. So what is value of gain? Just to make sure we're all on the same page and know what we're, each of us are, are meaning here, is that it's, it's, it's what the market is paying for the incremental gain from a lighter weight to a heavier weight and you pick what's the lighter weight and what's the heavier weight, and we can calculate that. Uh, the futures market can be used to estimate that value of gain that it's paying in the future for a, from a current weight to a heavier weight at some point in the future there. So we can uh, use that as a tool, even though you may not be willing to say, well, I'm going to buy a put, uh, buy a call, uh, sell a futures contract to get price protection, uh, you can still use the information to make some management decisions to take advantage of some opportunities. So how do you determine value again? It takes a market report. Many of us are, are with the information technology that we have available now, it's pretty easy to find market reports. Uh, you just take the price times the weight and uh, uh, for each weight range and get a gross dollar per head, compare the difference in the gross values and the difference in the weights, and you divide the, the weight difference into the gross head dollar difference, and you come up with a value of gain. Here's a market report for last week for Oklahoma City. I don't expect you to read this, but I just want to show you that that's what one looks like. So we're going to look at, say, a 325-pound, 329-pound uh, calf off of that market report. It was recorded at $2.45 uh, a pound. The gross values, you take those two together, you get $808. So what's the incremental value of gain between 329 and 375? Can you guess by looking at those numbers? what the market's paying for each additional pound between 329 and 375. Is it a dollar? Two dollars? About a dollar 92. That's a lot of opportunity there, isn't it? But you have to compare that to your cost of gain. Hopefully you know what, what that is. But there's some opportunities there uh, to take a calf that extra 46 pounds. The market is paying you a dollar 92 cents. That's on the current market. So if you go a little bit heavier and look at a 429 to 474, what's that value again? 80 cents. Ooh, you know, there's a lot of difference there. So would you want to buy a 429-pound calf? Or if you were a cow-calf producer, 
you know, what's it costing you to add that 45 pounds? Uh, is, it, is it maybe it's a break-even situation for you? Maybe this is a situation where you'd want to just strip and sell if that was uh, the time of year you had a 429-pound cat. So this is the power of determining value of gains, and we're going to show you how you can simplify that, uh, make it a lot quicker looking at the whole market report. So if you take that market report and you calculate the value of gain for each increment, it looks like this. This is very powerful information that you can use to determine uh, if you're a cow-calf producer, maybe when to sell your calf crop. If you're a stocker operator, maybe what size to buy and when, when to market that. So if you look at the smaller weights here, here's, the, here's what we calculated earlier. You know, some, some very high values of gain. They drop down, you know, here going from 575 to six and a quarter, it's only 57 cents. Well, there's probably not many cost of gains that low today. You may be a very low cost producer, but it's important that you know your cost of production. So if you were looking, looking to buy and you say, well, it cost me 80 cents a pound to put, away, put weight on calves if I retain them or if, I, if I'm buying them, you know, you're going to need to you know, look at these lighter weights and go up to you know, probably around this 575. So a lightweight calf to a, uh, a five-weight calf is going to be some, some very high value of gain. So if it's higher than your cost of gain, there's some opportunities there. So you can use this as information to help you decide what weight to buy or how long to hold your cattle once you, uh, once you already have them. So how can we use the futures market to give us a little better idea of the, buying these lighter weight calves and, and taking them to the, to the future, even though we may not want to take positions in the futures market uh, how can we use it to help us understand that value of gain? There's a website, this beefbasis.com. Kansas State University is one that has put this technology together. It's free. It's on the website. It's a good place to uh, look at what the prediction for a, a cash price would be based on the futures market in the future. So we, uh, we get on the website and we, we pick this forecasting tools right here and we're going to come up with a screen that looks like this. And it's got some little drop down menus here and you, uh, you know, uh, Oklahoma, uh, you have to choose that, Oklahoma Stockyards, or you can choose any one of the, the, the locations that the uh, Agricultural Marketing Service reports on. You know, is it steers or heifers? Uh, what's the frame size, the grade quality? what weight, uh, put in the number ahead, and you go over here and click what date you want to sell them. So based on the futures market, what's the price of a 850 pound calf going to be at Oklahoma National Stockyards on August the 15th? Well, you hit run once you get that information in there, and it tells us based on the futures market of $1.75, uh, and corn prices at 461, it's hard for you to see that, but it would be a dollar and 73 plus cents. So that's higher than what our cash market report said for today. So that's the reason as we look to the future to see what kind of opportunities we have that we use the futures market to help us do that. Because here's an example of why. Uh, if we used our market report today that we've been uh, discussing as an example, we looked at a 425 pound weight, the price was 233, we took that calf to 823, the current market says that calf today is worth $1.63, which the value gain would be 86 cents based on that current market report. If you look at the futures market uh, that we just went through beefbasis.com, that value gain is, is almost 99 cents. So about uh, 12, 13 dollars a hundred weight more. That could sway a decision. And just really in the last minute or two that I'm going to uh, visit with you, we're going to look about opportunities that, that just kind of whet your appetite for what's happening beyond uh, our borders. 
here's the population of the world in 2010. If you looked at the size of the economies, the GDP, here's the United States, Europe, Japan, I mean, those are the largest e economies. Okay, if you look at the population map in 2050, uh, here's South Africa, here's India. Huge population growth. Whatever number it is times the population of India is a big number. And so there's lots of opportunities there. These emerging markets, the middle class is going up. And as the middle class income goes up, more money buys more meat. Increased demand going forward. There are opportunities, I think, in this cattle market. Uh, the increased price level has not taken them all out. Takes a little bit of homework. And again, it's risky. Uh, you know, we're in a high risk market, but there's high opportunities here uh, as well. And, and for me, uh, here's a couple of the opportunities I have uh, to look forward to for the future. I'm going to try to take care, take advantage of these opportunities and uh, have a place for these two little guys going forward. Thank you very much.